Okay, so um, what you guys are about to see is something that's beyond unrealistic and just like fucking ridiculous. I don't know how editor's gonna feel, but uh, this next mission. Space. It's You're in space. space. You are flying in space. Space. Makes no sense. Space. Flying a fucking F-22 Raptor. I wish I could fly an F-22 Raptor in that. Hit him with the A-10 Warthog. <laughs> <laughs> they do have an A-10 in this game. Um, it's not that good in this game. Um, they also have the SC-35 and the F-16. Unlockable characters, they have the F-15 and X-29. The A-10 Warthog is not good. Uh, I'll, I'll... I'll... that in, uh, Forza, um, the, um, the Warthog actually has a manufacturer, and apparently, uh, the Warthog is manufactured by AMG, which is the high, which is the high-end tuning branch of Mercedes-Benz. So apparently, the Warthog is canonically a Mercedes. Okay. <laughs> so every time Chief and a, a, heart, a Spartan hops in the whip, they can say, Yo, check out my Mercedes. Yeah. I'm rolling around in that bag. No, it, not just that, it's an AMG Mercedes. So it's like, you're a Mercedes money. Yo, I paid straight cash for this bitch. It is a V12 AMG dynamic engine, according oh to Forza. By the way, Vlad. I just, I just, I just want somebody. I like have now knowing that. I just want to have like Sergeant Johnson pull up in a warthog with that line from Halo 2 going. Oh, I know oh what damn it! Like. I know what the ladies like. Yeah, for real. <laughs> I mean, it, Mercedes is current. Their most famous car at the moment, for, as far as status symbol is concerned, is the G wagon, which is literally just a luxury version of a military jeep that they made in the 1970s. I'm like, dude, let's put modern luxury into it and modern systems, and that's it. It's literally just a luxury military vehicle from the 70s. The Benz, man. Wait. That, that honestly explains why the Warthog is now in the Forza games. By the way, I just, sorry for the interruption. By the way, Vlad, <laughs> mm. I don't know if you uh, saw it last week, but um, we, we, I was uh, working. Uh, I was hosting the podcast, and we went on such a tirade on Halo. We went on for yeah, a, like a good hour. I I'm sorry that I missed it. I had I like no joke. I'm like I can go to my drive right now. Where is it? Where are my notes? <laughs> okay, so I have a document titled Halo Halo in brackets Paramount fuck ups. <laughs> And it is three pages long. <laughs> I could okay. I could just imagine it's a Halo fuck ups. It's just the it's just three pages. They're all blank except for one word. Everything. I took extensive notes going back and watching each episode. Just oh no! I found wrong. Oh but god! Purple explosion of boom. Still mad that fucking that is like they. I'm still mad that that fucking that human lady bitch that was in the covenant existed for the sole purpose of getting dicked down by chief. Hey, listen, man. Listen, okay. I will oh. say this about the whole dicking down. There is one person in the Halo TV show who should have been like pounding babes left, right, and center, and we mentioned him like 15 seconds ago, and that's Johnson. Sergeant fucking Johnson! Yeah. No, I love how they're just like, they they made like, they did the whole clear out, oh, we need to have diversity in the characters, oh, it's like, bro, it's Halo, you didn't need to do that. Johnson is literally, and always has been, the most popular character in the series. Like, but, or at least behind, like, outside of Master Chief, who's everyone's favorite character? It's always fucking Johnson. Johnson's yeah. right if, fucking Johnson there. Wasn't, yeah, Johnson wasn't even a developed character at first. He was just the one random Yeah, but everyone loved him so much. Evolved, and they brought him back. Yeah, he was just loved so much that we kept bringing him back and gave him character. Because Sergeant Johnson's fucking goddamn badass! Yeah, of course, and Arden Johnson isn't in the Paramount movie because they turned him into Keys. Yeah, and that didn't make sense because they also degraded Keys in Paramount, so he's not... He just seems like a guy who's just kind of there to say things. As opposed to the Keys that we know. And also, um, 
I love what they did to Miranda. Rather than making a bad, oh, damn uh, it. badass person capable of making excellent tactical decisions or on-the-fly moves, um, no, this one is just a researcher and frequently kind of an idiot, on, which is out of character because Miranda in the series, yeah, she was quick. She was really sharp on tactics and almost kind of almost borderline reckless or brave, depending on who you ask. Um, she at least had like border. She was the daughter of two geniuses. Wait, I was mm. going to say, wait, Miranda is in Miranda Keys, right? Miranda. Yeah, yeah and the way she, she dies, she the way she dies is she rams a pelican through a control room, whips out a shotgun, and starts pumping brutes. Yeah, and then gets offed off by uh, Truth. Yeah, in other, in other words, that is a really badass way to die. Also, if you really think about it, her actions were what allowed Arbiter and Chief to shut down the Ark. Yeah, so I'm saying that, like, she... I'm saying, like, you don't need to add representation to Halo. It already had it, and what the represent, and the stuff that they did do to it would just downgraded everything that already was established. Like, hey, remember how Madrigal was supposed to be a, a cool sci-fi futuristic Latin America like it's talked about in the novels? Nope, it looks like a desert wasteland. Yep. No, like, just okay, there, there's only two things that back-to-back -back I liked about this series. And it, it's a, it, yes, it's a very ironic sense. And that is um, two scenes involving Quan Ha. One when she is uh, cuffed to a motorcycle. She's trying to break the cuffs free with a bunch of rocks. And there's a top view where she's having a temper tantrum going all, ah! And it's so funny. The other of which is when she's in some kind of purgatory state. And she's facing Master Chief. And a couple of times, she gets her ass kicked. I, my favorite is when Master Chief puts on his helmet because, like, they focus on him putting on his helmet being, it's time to go shoot alien time. Oh, let it take it off, like, 40 seconds later. After hopping in the bins and driving. <laughs> going for a jaw ride, boys. Again, <laughs> the fact that they literally had him reveal his helmet, it's just fucking insulting. It's it like is. It is. It's similar. It's similar to what uh, Spider-Man 3 did with Topher Grace being Venom. Oh, look, we finally get to see Venom. Oh, wait, it's just fucking Topher Grace having sharp teeth. Great. They they, they, they always want to make, like, facial expression show whenever it comes to, um... Whenever it comes to actors. Yeah, well, go ahead. You don't need to, though, because... That was... Well, in video games, you... Hey, Solar. In video games, you can just hey, have Master Chief be Master Chief. But ah, fucking hell! The guy almost never takes off his helmet, and you can, like, watch scenes where you can read his emotions perfectly fine without ever seeing his face. You know what it's, like, it's like the Mandalorian oh! did what Halo should have done, because the Mandalorian took off the helmet at Let the me very control. end. Let me control! When Jesus. it needed to, and after it fucking built up an appropriate emotional reaction to it, not just right at the fucking start. Yeah, also, difference. People who made Mandalorian... They actually bothered to research the material. Or rather, they were they were making a new material, but they at least paid attention to how Mandalore works. Yeah, exactly. yeah they, they actually paid gave attention them a... to the old material in order to make the new material actually Ouch. fit into the universe. Exactly. Yeah, not, like not the fact they said, "Oh yeah, uh, we oh. don't to look at any research or images of this," but yeah, we'll just go along with it. Like, not to mention the fucking, not to mention fucking Pedro Pascal ah. that actually plays the Mandalorian with a stop huge with the autopilot. The, the Star Wars I'm, series beforehand. I'm oh. very worried though because Pedro has straight up said in interviews that like, or previously, recently he may have changed his tune. He was like, I don't plan on playing The Last of Us video games because I want to give my own interpretation of- No! <laughs> that's the bad- that's the bad- No, okay! You know, this is the same out. fucking problem repeated over and over again. Just follow the goddamn games! You no, have a no, story no. right there! Golden, Golden, the problem with that is Last of Us 2. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, then don't adapt it. They like, didn't gonna, fuck up I'm Joel in Last of Us Two. They... they did. To be fair, they did not fuck up Joel. They didn't have the opportunity to fuck up Joel. But you know, like, like Joel is one. Yeah, because they I... killed him. They killed his ass off in like five minutes. I will say this right now. <laughs> I will say this right goddamn now. Joel is one of the best written video game characters of all time because of the ending of the first game. 
because yeah. he's inherently a flawed character. God damn it! This game just embraces that. They're not like, he, oh yeah, he's like the ideal human being that everybody should strive to be. No, he's a flawed fucking character, and he at the end of the game, you fully fucking realize God that. God damn it! He massacres that does not a make fully him functional. bad character. He massacres a fully functional medical facility to save one, save his new dog. Was it the right choice? No, and I see and this argument potentially a bunch of dooms the rest of the human race in the process. Let's not skip but over that. Isn't, that. isn't that isn't the point that like he's supposed to emphasize that the characters who do everything, um, he's supposed to emphasize that like what characters who would do these things or go out of the way for everyone are inherently selfish and really would fuck over the human race just for their own just for their own emotional. Yeah, it's emotions. to show like, that. Wasn't that the point? It's to it. In essence, it was supposed to show that he, like, he's a father, and what lengths would a father go to save their child? Everything. You'd kill, mm -hmm. you'd kill a bunch of people for them, wouldn't you? Oh yeah. Which is what and, you do. And I see a bunch of people make the argument that, oh, the fucking fireflies are incompetent, so they, you know, they got like that justifies what he did. No, nobody should give a fuck about what the fireflies do or who they are. Okay, nobody should give a shit. Let your characters make morally, like, morally wrong choices. Like, Let that's them the make point them. of that scene. Joel made a selfish decision that has consequences. Mm -hmm. And he, and he, like, was it the, was it a morally right choice? Moral no. relativism. N but no, generally. But do I believe he'd do it? Absolutely, I do! I do certainly what? fucking believe that he would do that over him, like, suddenly... Over him, oh, like, building Jesus. up all this over the course of the first game, only for him to be like, "Yeah, I don't really give a shit at the end," and just let her die. Yeah, no, he like he would absolutely do that. It's like the dude held his daughter as she bled to death from a gunshot wound to the gut. Mm-hmm. He didn't want to deal with that again. He's not going to stand by and let it happen again. Mm-hmm. Fuck the rest of humanity. They can figure it out. He figured it out for years. I wouldn't say it's more of a fuck you, I think it's more of a trauma response, maybe? You could argue, maybe I'm thinking too hard. It's, it's, it he, could be she a myriad became his, of She became his surrogate daughter, so that was going to happen either way. Yeah, yeah. it was going to happen, and people who make the argument that, ah, uh, it's justified because of whatever, the, like, the incompetence of the Fireflies, I feel like that's more of a happy accident, that Naughty Dog made the Fireflies, like, fucking incompetent and stupid. It's like, I wasn't even paying attention to that. As far as I was concerned, like, Ellie could absolutely produce something to fight the virus, but that wasn't the point, because it wasn't going to fucking happen. Yeah, because, like... and this is why I have the personal view that all zombie media is the same, is because the whole point of the media is that there's no escape. So if you suddenly have something that can actually cure the zombies, you've got no story anymore. Mm -hmm. And that's true for every piece of zombie media, which is why I think they're samey, because it's just going to be perpetual well, suffering with no escape, every time. Well, the, the reason why the zombie stories didn't die out is because um, they quickly realized there, there really is only like one or two stories that you can actually tell with it, and also people have figured out or thought the tropes enough that the reason apocalypse kind of has to start in the middle of the apocalypse is because you have to hit humanity severely with the idiot stick on multiple levels to the point where we would have to actively make it work and people yeah. also forget that um among other things if the zombie virus technically already exists it's rabies true yes it's literally rabies and also notice yeah rabies exists and is a problem oh, but shit. it is but it, it's not capable of taking over the world, because even biologists will tell you biting is actually a really shitty way to spread your disease. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, you bite things with teeth. You're not like a, you're not like a spider, you don't project venom from teeth. I will say, I have seen two pieces of zombie media that are among the creme de la creme because of the storytelling that it uses, and the zombies are more of like a, a device. They're more of, they're like a tool. But it's, yeah. more, it's more of a He's focus a, thing, and that is a, zombies as a metaphorical tool can work. But tell me, oh, this could happen? No, it can't. Rabies already exists, motherfucker. Yeah, that's it like. So I will give my two examples. One, I think I both of them are readily available on Netflix. If not, one of them is <sighs> readily available on Prime Video, and that is the Korean TV show Kingdom and the Korean movie Train to Busan. Oh, I know that. 
Well, I've heard good things about Train to Busan. Oh, fucking... Train to Busan was actually really good. Train to Busan isn't a movie, it's a fucking film. <laughs> it's a cinematic to experience. It is. Oh. <laughs> like, it's... You, you did hear that some dumbass that some dumbasses in Hollywood are like, oh, we're gonna re we're gonna reboot, we're gonna do an a, a, a American adaptation of this, and we're changing the setting to America, to which everyone yep. just went, why don't you guys just give it subtitles? If you could yep. do the same shit to motherfucking Parasite, why the hell can't you do that to Train to Busan? You don't. Yeah, need they the Hollywood is stubborn. That's why. No, it's like the problem with it is that just like with Paramount's Halo. Well, as some people think of it, these people are just like, we can make it better, but they can't. No, you can, yeah. I think they can make it, make it better. Here's what makes it a very big, a very big issue. Um, Korea and like South, like Southeastern Asia it, in a whole is, uh, they have a very heavy focus on uh, public transportation in the form of like subways and trains to get from one city or one location to another. Hey, where, the, where the fuck does that exist in America? Not uh, that much. New York, and that's about it. New York, <laughs> Boston. A little bit of Los An a little bit of Los Angeles, but even then, it's not that much. Cars are around. Because like, it's, it's mostly down. like the, it's mostly like the north as well. It mostly like, like the northeast, like Boston and New York. Yeah. Yeah. Because like in Japan, like their their train system is so fucking precise that if their if their fucking monorail or their subway or whatever is fucking thirty seconds late. It'll actually like basically issue a ticket that says, "Yeah, by the way, I'm not, I'm not late because of my own fault. The train was late." So, what should I name? What should I? What kind of initial should I give to this one instead of my own? D I C. F U K C. I'm sorry. A C. D I C. A C. D I C. Oh, D I C. All right. Dick. Dick. I was saying A C like. Fucking like an well, I spoke first, so fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, so I, I, no, I will, hang on. Tell me it's what you ass. Can't. This is like I got. Okay, don't stop being. It's like don't stop being. <laughs> and then, like, fucking. He asked the question. I tried to answer it, and you cut me off three times. And you're gonna try and call me a cunt, really? <laughs> this is how I... British people fight. Huh. So, I like to announce the top is school. Oh, it would have been cool if that top one said like 69 in the first few numbers. Oh, would have been perfection. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, if you guys have like a couple of hours to kill, watch watch Kingdom. It's great. No, yeah. Because Pretty... it takes. Hey, it, uh, editor. Yeah. We're in space. <laughs> space. How the fuck does that work? But, uh, Kingdom takes place during, like, the, uh, the, like, time period in Korea, like, right after the attempted Japanese invasion, which took place, like, right after the Sengoku era. So it's, like, feudal Korea? It's feudal Korea. And it is, like, it explains why the, why this infection spread so far, because what the fuck are you going to do? <laughs> Your options for long-range combat are very limited. Your options for combat are... Uh, blade or blade on long stick. They have those arrows. arrows back pretty much it. You have air, you back have back arrows back. and you have like very primitive firearms, like first generation firearms. So you could. Eh. I will say this. Do you I know mean, who if one there's of the like most... fifty of them, you're probably gonna hit something. You're probably not gonna kill them though. You want to know who one of the most effective like kill like killers and one of the heroes of that show is? Hmm. He's a fucking tiger hunter. Nice. So, like, he's he's the kind of guy who went out, like, and fucking killed large, like, 300-pound creatures with a knife and a shitty muzzle-loaded rifle that would probably misfire 90% of the time. So, yeah, he's able to kill why? zombies fairly effectively. He didn't give a fuck. Literally nobody that I've talked to knows his name. They just call him Tiger Man. Not Amazing. to be confused with Tiger King. Not to be oh, confused God, no. with the Tiger King. <laughs> <Ugh>. <laughs> fucking Tiger King and Kingdom fucking body goddamn Korean zombies. Tiger Man. Tiger Man. That's Where's my goddamn Tiger tigers? <laughs> that bitch Carol Baskin! Now that is a death battle I want to see. Tiger Man versus Florida Man. <laughs> Jesus Christ.
Well, I mean, Tiger Man, Tiger Man kills tigers. Florida Man kills our hope in humanity. <laughs> and, and You're not wrong. Florida Man gets thrown off of plane for hurling racial slurs at stewardesses. That's the Florida Man article from my birthday. Florida Man. How do you? Man, okay, so. With a frying pan. How do you? So how do you throw someone out of a plane? Because like. The door and you'd shot, you'd eat them the fuck no, out. but if it's one of those big ones, isn't it pressurized or something? They're all yeah, so it's like it's it's either they throw them off at their like uh their flight like the airport they're supposed to like disembark and like reembark another one at, or they just don't take off and then they throw you off. 